Hi, Abiding Together podcast listeners. This is Michelle, and I am so excited to tell you about this week's sponsor for the podcast, The Little Catholic Company. They have actually sponsored our podcast before, and we are so excited to collaborate with them again because they make beautiful pieces of jewelry that are handcrafted, but they're little pieces that are like little signposts of beauty to evangelize. And for all of our listeners, we are offering you all a, well, The Little Catholic is offering you 15% off your entire purchase with the discount code ABIDE15. Again, that is 15% off your entire purchase with the code ABIDE15. So head over to the Little Catholic website and just see their beautiful jewelry and their beautiful just craftsmanship and just love all the beauty that you can explore. Hello and welcome to season eight of the Abiding Together podcast. Abiding Together is a place where you can find connection, rest, and encouragement on your journey with Jesus Christ. My name is Sister Miriam James Heidland, and each and every week I am joined by two of my very dearest friends, Heather Kim and Michelle Bensinger. This podcast is born out of our friendship and sharing all kinds of things together. Our walk with Jesus, our insights, the lessons we are still learning, our joys, sorrows, tears, and laughter, and you are most welcome on the journey with us. You can find out more information about all of our episodes at abidingtogetherpodcast.com. But for now, grab a cup of coffee, settle in, and welcome home. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Abiding Together podcast. And we are continuing our journey into the revelation of who Jesus is through the scripture. And I think you're going to love this one. We often talk about the vine and the branches and abiding because we're abiding together. Uh, But I think you're going to love just the nuance and be able to take that and apply it to your own life of of the vine and the branches and how we abide and how we are like the grapes that are crushed and and just all the beautiful things. So before we talk about the crushing, I I won't sing it, Heather, you want me to sing it, but you're Mm -hmm. the musician girl. You should sing it. You want to sing every, you want to sing it for us all? No, but thanks for putting me on the spot. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody, we're just referring to this song by Bethel called New Wine. So we want you to go listen to it. Hill song, Heather. Oh, Hill song. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, Mm -hmm. my bad, my bad. Dang, girl. Yeah, Hill song, New Wine. Wine. That's going to be the theme song of this episode. So you can go mm, check it out. Yeah. Sponsored by just kidding. They're not sponsoring us. <laughs> so we're going to take our scripture passage, our guiding. So we talked about Jesus as the good shepherd. And so now we're going to talk about him being the vine and we, the branches. So we're going to talk about uh, the gospel of John chapter 15, verse five, uh, where Jesus says, I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit apart from me. You can do nothing. And I just want to offer also a, a scripture pass or a, a reflection from St. John Paul II. And he says this, he says, to be living branches in the vineyard of the church means that above all, to be in living communion with Christ the vine. The branches are not self-sufficient. They are totally dependent on the vine. In the vine is the source of their life. I just want to say that again. In the vine is the source of their life. So to kick us off here, Heather, do you want to talk a bit about your experience of being uh, a branch and being a grape and what the Lord is doing in your life as he invites you to be dependent upon him. Yeah. I mean, we talk about this stuff a lot, but I think it's because it's at the core of like some of our disintegration as human beings. You know, we were always meant to be in deep communion with God. And then it happened in the garden. It continues to happen for each of mm-hmm. us in our life. There's this rupture where union has is tearing away, you know, in all these different places. And and we're we're going back. You know, we're going back to be in union with God. That's the journey home to heaven. I think for so much of my life I thought I was the vine just my own little mind like, like out there trying to figure it all out. And I have my little branches, my people, my family, my whatever, and that it was my job to take care of everything. It was my job to be the life source, to be the provider, to be the, the life giver, the security, the safety, the like just everything. And, and it's been really a journey of dependence, a journey of realizing how utterly dependent I am upon God and thank God that I am. Like, and learning that it's not just like I'm powerless, it's that I'm, I'm uniting myself to someone who cares so deeply, Mm -hmm. who loves me so deeply. 
and who wants to set me free to be who I really am, to operate in the gifts that he's given me for a purpose. So it's not like a a powerlessness where I lose myself, Mm -hmm. but a dependence where I find myself in, in the arms of the one who truly knows who I am. Oh, can I just ask you, Heather, that that's gold right there. It's not a powerlessness where I lose myself, but a dependence where I find myself. And for most of us, that's such a break point of if I'm dependent, I'm going to lose myself. Or Mm -hmm. we have an unhealthy relationship with true dependence, what healthy dependence is. Mm -hmm. And so we think that we have to assert ourselves, like you're saying, or I have to find, like have to be totally independent of everything, then I'm going to finally be autonomous or, or be mature. Could, could you just talk a bit about that just some more? Cause that, that is gold right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think for many of us, we have had many moments in our life through wounds, decisions that we may have made, but most often through poor decisions that other people have made that have affected us, that have caused us to feel this incredible powerlessness where we didn't have a choice in the moment. And it's been so destructive to us as a human person, things that never should have happened. And so in in an effort for us to try to like restore that within ourselves, when we go on our own efforts to try to restore that, it can come out in all kinds of false ways and all kinds of ways that that cause us actually to be more disoriented than ever mm-hmm. because our identity isn't truly rooted where it should be. And mm-hmm. I think that when we actually allow ourselves to be dependent on God, like I said before, he truly sets us free the power that comes from him is who we really are, Mm -hmm. that it's not a man-made effort. I'm not sure if that makes sense what I'm saying, but. Oh, that's so true. I, I think also what you're saying is very true that because of suffering, right. And because of Mm -hmm. the ways that we've experienced brokenness in our life, that many times that's our response, but it's a trauma response. It's not a response made out of, of life and love. So we all want to be restored, Mm -hmm. but when we seek Mm -hmm. that on our own, it, it isn't rooted in the right place often and it can go off in all kinds of directions and actually we lose ourselves even more. Mm -hmm. Like I think when we attach ourselves to Jesus and we are dependent on him, the power and the strength that comes from him, like to even use our voice well, to regain like the authority of who we are as children of God, there is nothing more powerful than that. When we stand in our true identity, not an identity that we have to create or we have to force or we have to manipulate over people or we have to convince anybody of, but one that goes way deeper than that. That, that we know deep in our bones that we are beloved children of God. There is nothing more powerful than that. When I encounter people who know that deep in their bones, there is something you cannot shake when you are around them. You're like, whoa, like they are so secure, mm-hmm. so at peace. And then the fruits of the spirit are able to flow more fully. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts about all that, Michelle? I think one of the things that's coming up in my prayer, but also in different aspects of Sister and Heather's prayer is that we have such a tangible God, a God that is not up high in the clouds, but a God that is incarnational and Mm -hmm. wants to be with us. And I love the image of the vine dresser because it is a God that loves to play in the dirt. Mm. You know, that is the image that I got. He is the God that is back in Genesis that like breathed life into Adam, but he bent down. He was playing in the dirt. And then later on in Genesis, he says he planted a garden in Eden. I think it's like Genesis 2.15 or 2.5, but he planted a garden in Eden. He didn't have to plant a garden. He could just have created it to happen and pop up. He's God, but he's a God of a process. He's a God of relationship. And he's a God that wanted to invite us to co-labor with him Mm -hmm. in the garden, to be a part of what he is doing in and with us to be a part of what he is doing in the world. And that is our tangible God. But the first part is being on the vine, like abiding in the vine Mm -hmm. so deeply. And like you were saying, when we abide in the vine, then that is where the fruit grows. And when we abide in the vine, that is where we're in true relationship and intimacy with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like you said, like those are the people, those are us that they know it in their bones because they're bearing good fruit for the kingdom. And that is a powerful thing. And that's like the wine for the kingdom. But I think it goes back. There's something about the vine and there's something about a garden that is a process. It is not quick. New wine isn't quick. It has to ferment and sit. Relationship takes time. We have to build trust. We have to look at those areas that we have been hurt. We have to look at our areas of sin. We have to look at our habits to see how do we abide deeper into the vine to produce the fruit 
that will last and to create new wine for the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And it's an ongoing process. Yes. Mm -hmm. Always, always. Mm -hmm. And the journey is just as important. And I uh, might dare say almost more important than, and the, you know, Mm -hmm. heaven is our end destination. That's the most important, but this journey is important. Mm -hmm. That's so true what you're both saying there. And I was reminded this morning during prayer, I, I, and it'll, it'll have to do with my one thing today, but reading again, a book called The Life Model by James Friesen. And the, the mm-hmm. title of the book is Living from the Heart Jesus Gave You. And I've, I read it a while ago, but the Lord was like, you need to just spend some more time with this. And they kept emphasizing the continual necessity for maturity that maturity never ends and that we're always continually through the community, through loving community and through healing of trauma and all the lies we believe about ourselves is through those two things of authentic love from others. And also from the, the reception of the authentic love of God that heals and resolves trauma in our life that we continue to mature and that we have to, our whole life is a maturation process. And they quoted, you know, from the letter of James where he says that you may be complete and mature, lacking in nothing. And St. Paul Mm -hmm. says that too. And I was thinking of how, just how often in life I want to get to certain places and not that I want to stop, but I want to be done. (laughs) And I want to claim some sort of nirvana there and just say, no, I I finished with that. And the Lord's like, I love you so much that I'm going to continue to make new wine out of you. And I'm going to continue to mature you so that you can bear the image of God. And that's, Mm. that's the continual crushing process. And we talk about crushing the, the grape or like the seed that goes into the ground, it has to die to what it is so it can become something far more advanced and, and far more transformative than it ever was. And mm-hmm. so this, it's a great grace. I, sometimes I, we think, I, I, well, I'll just say it for myself. Sometimes when I, I reach new levels of areas of my life that need to be transformed, areas where we were just talking about before we started this podcast of just areas where I was sitting at my desk yesterday, repenting of the areas where I have broken ways of relating and broken ways of thinking and when we see those things in our hearts, many times it's where the enemy comes right there and says, well, look at you, you know, who do you think you are? And you still have these areas of growth and you should be perfect by now. Like all these lies, which none of that is true. And so in the, in the book this morning, and I was reading, they were saying, actually, it's these break points that all of us have throughout our life over and over and over again, that lead to new transformation, that lead to new healing. And that leads to new maturity. And then the process, like the Paschal mystery begins over and over and over again. So this crushing, even though we usually avoid it at all costs mm. <laughs> and the dependence therein upon Jesus, who delights that we grow into his full stature, that is how it works. Y'all that, mm-hmm. that I just, today I was like, Oh, I'm so grateful, Lord. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what we've talked about this before. It's like the more that you mature, in the spiritual life and not that I feel mature at all. Like there's many days I feel like I'm at square one mm-hmm. again, but the more experiences that you have where you choose to lean into what God is doing and submit even to the crushing, yes. the good, the, that wine that comes, the good fruit that comes is so sweet that you're like, mm. okay, maybe I'm going to be a little more willing to do this again. Mm-hmm. The next time the crushing comes around. I love this quote from John Paul II, where he said, whatever hardship or drought befall us, he is the source that offers us the water of life mm. that feeds and strengthens us. He takes upon himself all our sins, anxieties, sufferings, and purifies and transforms us in a way that is ultimately mysterious into good branches that produce good wine. In such times of hardship, we can sometimes feel as if we ourselves were in the wine press like grapes being utterly crushed. But we know that if we are joined to Christ, we become mature wine. God can transform into love even the burdensome and oppressive aspects of our lives. It is important that we abide in Christ in the vine. Yeah, And and this is a lesson that I think the three of us have learned over and over again. We have been crushed. I've journeyed with you both through times where you you are being crushed mm-hmm. and you with me as well. Mm-hmm. And I've also seen the beauty that has come in both of you from, from those times where you've submitted to what God is doing in the crushing. Mm-hmm. It's actually a beautiful thing. It's part of the journey. It's not to hurt us or destroy us. It's to bring about something good and sweet. And it has to be so. Mm-hmm. I just think, yeah, like even this morning, I was telling the girls, the season right now where we're recording at the time we're recording, we have yet another hurricane about to hit, a, mm-hmm. will hit New Orleans, but will affect all, all the Gulf Coast. So this morning I got up and I could just feel like just the Holy Spirit like just, you know, you can feel the air before the um, 
for those of you that don't live around where hurricanes hit, there's something almost electric about the air right before it comes. Like there's the wind starts to pick up and there's the humidity that comes in and the air physically changes, of course. So, but I could feel it. And I walked, I knew I wanted to walk to the water this morning. I knew I wanted to get to the water. Like there was just like, it was like, once I said Moana was calling me. And so I, uh, I had to get <laughs> there you go. So she sang for us. Heather. Sorry. There you go. Jealous. <laughs> You're welcome. It's going to be in everybody's head all day now. <laughs> totally. Abiding together, Disney style. Oh, that's <laughs> used to gather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah back to your journey to the water this morning sorry, sorry, sorry. we got distracted okay. focus focus <laughs> that's awesome back so back to the water but I was feeling like but I was feeling the wind against the water and it was just this feeling but I was like okay lord instead of stressing me out instead of trying to think you have allowed this you have allowed this situation. What is your perspective on it? Where do you want me to grow from this? How do you want to transform me in this? What is your, like, it's just to stop and pause and see like, okay, Lord, but the question of how do you want me to grow from this? And what are you doing in this mm-hmm. are the two things. And I thought to myself, oh my goodness, how many times and opportunities has the Lord provided me for growth and transformation? And I have just complained through tantrum, ignored or whatever. And I was thinking about even the podcast, a new wine. I mean, here I am drinking stale grape juice and he has new wine before me Mm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. And like he is Mm -hmm. offering new wine for a new season and I'm back there with stale grape juice. Mm -hmm. The Lord has something before us. Mm -hmm. So, but it's the crushing. It doesn't happen in the easy. Mm -hmm. It happens in the process of the crushing but the crushing knowing that there's something greater and a greater transformation in us. And we have talked about this before on the podcast. And usually I avoid pain if I can, almost at all costs. And, but the Lord has really been showing me that it is going through that I learned that he is the comforter. Like I have to go through and he has just been really working on me as knowing the Holy spirit is the comforter, that he is the God of comfort and that I will not find it in earthly things. I will not find it in avoiding pain. I only find it in going through a maturation process. Mm -hmm. Like you say, sister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was really beautiful. My oldest daughter, Maria is um, taking Franciscan university theology classes online Mm -hmm. this semester. And she's doing a scripture and tradition class right now. And last night she came down, this kid has always had this love of old Testament scripture. Ever since she was like seven years old, she got this little like Bible. It's like a comic book Bible kind of thing from her godfather. And she has been fascinated with old Testament. Like she can recall stories in the old Testament way, way better than I can. So anyway, she's taking the scripture and tradition class and she came downstairs last night and was just like going off for like 45 minutes about all the stuff she was learning. Like she was just on fire. I was like, whoa, like something is really stirring here beyond just learning head stuff. It was so perfect with our conversation before with Dr. Swafford about the, joining the head and the heart. I can see that happening within her, but she was t- talking to me about, she goes, mom, I used to read like the old Testament and just like these individual stories. She said, now I'm seeing the whole thing. It's starting to come together for me about what God was doing. It's a whole big story. It's not just these individual stories that I would read like as one chapter. And she said, it's it's a long journey sometimes mm-hmm. to see God's will come to fruition. And then she goes, but then there's these moments where just all of a sudden change happens mm. and some and, and his promise comes through. And she said, like, I'm learning, like, maybe we just need to hang on a little longer and change is coming. And I was like, girl, preach, preach. girl, preach. <laughs> Yeah. And I just said, Maria, this has been something that God has been trying to teach me lately. Change could be right around the corner. Hang on. Like when you feel like you're being what we're talking about, you're being squeezed, you're being crushed. You're like, I can't take it anymore. Yes, you can. When you lean into God as the vine, when you trust him, if you try to do it on your own, yes, you are going to get crushed and just like wiped out internally. But when you lean into what God is doing, And then change could be right around the corner. Just hang on. And I think there's many of us who are in a place right now who need to hear that. Just hang on. Hang in there. You know, like lean into the vine. You never know when change is around the corner, when breakthrough is about to happen, when the promise is about to come to fruition. Mm, 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 mm. It makes me think of, I think it's Galatians 4, 4, where St. Paul talks about the in the fullness of time, God Mm. sent his son born of a woman. And in the fullness of time that, one day it wasn't, and then it was. Mm-hmm. And that was the fullness of time. And I think 
of what you both are saying of, of that reality of that with Jesus, we can do the hard things to put it in very, you know, common language that we can do that. And we will never regret being faithful. We will never regret it. And how many times in our life we've, I know myself, we've regretted trying to get off the vine, trying to do it myself, trying to manipulate things so I can gain power and control over something. I always regret that, but I never, I've never regretted standing at the foot of the cross with Mary and surrendering everything. Mm -hmm. Even if it meant horrendous suffering, I've never regretted that. Mm -hmm. But that, that truth of, of this whole process of abiding and the crushing and the process of maturation. And I'm just wondering, Michelle, on this, or one of you on this document, which you guys have done a wonderful job with, uh, you put some questions that might help us with our own self-evaluation of how do I know when I'm growing and maturing versus how do I know, you know, when there's something else happening. So would one of you want to talk about that? I'm not sure where you got those, but when do we want to talk about that? Just some similar questions of what are maybe this week we can kind of look at some of these areas of our life and say, am I abiding? Am I in, in, enduring the crushing or am I fighting it? And I'm trying to do things my own way. What we've hit home about a couple of times, what Sister was saying, it, it is a process, like it's a maturation process, and it, we are constantly growing. But we also have to be vigilant. And I think it's really easy just to go through the day to day and not pay attention to what is going on in our heart, you know? And like a few questions that I got about, and this was like a Bible study on the vine is like, is my heart growing warmer or colder towards people? Hmm. What is the status of my heart? I think another question is like, am I constantly in a bad mood? You know, mm -hmm. like for us, like, or am I moody? Am I constantly exhausted? And I think this is a huge one. Do I get fixated on offenses or I'm willing to overlook most of them? Mm -hmm. I think right now with the climate that is going on and a pandemic, and for those of us in the United States, we have a very charged political climate. I think it's very easy to take offense. Mm -hmm. And I think the Lord is asking us to to like go deeper and like, why is this, like, why is this hurting my heart? Why is this offending me? Mm -hmm. Why am I seeing people as enemies mm -hmm. instead of children of God and image bearers? Why am I, you know, but to look at ourselves because the, the only thing that we can change or reform is our own person. Yeah. You know, we can pray for others, but I think also like, what is the status of our heart? Is it stony or is it like flesh? And you know what I mean? Like stone where you, like there's a hardness to you. There's mm -hmm. an edge to you. There's a bitterness to you. Or is there flesh where there is a gentleness, a kindness to you? You know when that is coming, you know, like, you know, when it's something different. And I think for us, a lot of it has to do because there's been a lot of unknowns this year. I think we're seeing a lot of the fruit that is disordered in our life come up because we're all out of control in some way, shape or form. And we have no control over our external environments. But I think one of the big lessons as like we're talking about like the shepherd and the and the vine dresser in the vineyard mm -hmm. is that we have to make sure our root system is in the father and that it goes deep. And the areas that it is not, our root system is not fully planted in the father is areas that we are not bearing good fruit or areas that we're not, that there's just some disorderment in a way. Mm -hmm. But it takes time and it takes just a holy pause to get to ask the questions mm -hmm. and we have to be intentional about our spiritual growth. We mm -hmm. have to be. Definitely. And another thing that I've reflected on, like it's, a, it's just another version of what these questions lead to is, are the fruits of the spirit active and visible in my life? Amen. Yes. It's easy for me to look at someone else and go, Hmm, where is the fruits of the spirit in their life? You know, <laughs> easy for me to point out. But the more important question is, where are they in my life? Amen. Like, Amen. Am I operating out of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control? Self-control, friends. Like, I mean, all of those things, are they active in my life? When I go on the internet, are they active in my life? When I interact with my family, when I interact with someone at the school, when I interact with people who don't do their job, am I operating in the fruits of the spirit? And I, I think what you said, Michelle, about the stony heart versus the heart of flesh, like that was something I was thinking about before you started speaking. I was like, there's something about a grape. You can crush it pretty easily mm -hmm. because it doesn't have Ooh. a hard shell on it. You know, and I think for many of us, like in our protection of ourselves, and this is, this is orphan versus beloved son or daughter of God living when we are an orphan, we learn to protect ourselves because we don't want to be hurt anymore. And we put this hard shell around us, around our heart. And when that happens, it's very hard to be crushed, right? Like, I mean, at least we convince ourselves that it is. 
But when it's the hand of God, the crushing is a beautiful thing. It's for good, you know, and we have to know when to like be strong, draw boundaries, like all those things that are that are good and healthy behaviors. But like we do need to let the guard down when it comes to God. And I think for many of us, like that's a real trouble spot for us because we've been so hurt. We're like, I don't know how to trust you with my heart. If you mm-hmm. crush me, is it going to is it going to kill me? Mm-hmm. If I if I let this this new the promise of new wine is it actually going to come or am I just going to be like a crushed grape on the ground? You know these are the questions that I think rattle around in our hearts because it's not uh, just an idea. This is not just oh this beautiful image of a grape being crushed. Like these are real situations in our life that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. There are situations in my life right now where I am being pressed and crushed and it's excruciating. Like it's so incredibly painful and everything in me is just like, please stop, please stop. Like I want out of here. Like I'm, you know, fight, flight, freeze. I am out. Like (laughs) that is my go-to. I just like get me out of here. But I'm like having to lean into the Lord and say like, help me to stay. Just help me to stay here. I trust you, Jesus. This hurts. I trust you. I trust you that you're going to bring good out of this. Mm. That is so sacred, Heather. Uh, That is so sacred. And it just seems like what you both are speaking of is that the areas of our hearts that, that are flesh and also the areas of our hearts that we have still stone that are still stony and Mm -hmm. that we don't have to be stuck in self-hatred and self-condemnation when we see those parts of our hearts, because like you're saying, Heather, those are areas of just, of just deep self-protection that harbor pain. And I think offering ourselves just tremendous kindness there and just Mm -hmm. saying, okay, Jesus, I see this part of my heart and I want to hate myself or I want to deny it, or I want to minimize it, or I want to blame somebody else, but I'm so terrified of this part of my heart. I'm a terrified what's underneath it. And can you please come and meet me there? You know, and that's, Mm -hmm. that's like, we talked about the continual journey of maturation because we're a mix of so many things and the Lord delights to bring all of that into communion. Mm -hmm. And I just was, I was thinking, I'm not sure if I've said it on this podcast, but I was thinking lately of just, I, I see it in myself in this own journey, but I've just was praying with so many people and hearing so many stories. I think, so often we have these three common self-defense mechanisms when we see those hard parts of our hearts. And the first one is I've already dealt with that. I don't have to deal with that anymore. So that's usually a very common self-defense mechanism. The second one is, well, it's not as big as other people's stuff. So either I don't, I feel like I'm worthy enough to have Jesus investigate that, or it's not a big deal. And then the third one is if I start crying, if I open that door, if I let that part of my heart seen, I don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And so just like noticing those parts of where we minimize and we push away and it prevents the transformation into something greater. And I think mm-hmm. what we find most of all, most often is these just these tender places that are harboring deep fears and deep trauma. Mm-hmm. But Christ is always there. He he's just always there. There's nothing beyond his mercy and his uh, his redemption. And he delight that's what he does. Mm-hmm. He delights to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm a big believer in like, don't go into these places alone. Mm-hmm. Like yes. hold the hands of Jesus, hold the hands of Our Lady or of the saints who journey with you, but keep in the gaze of God. Like I have to do that. Like when things are so hard, like you you can't fall into the, like the enemy's lies that this is futile. Mm-hmm. It's meaningless. Like your suffering means nothing or, or whatever, even just a growth process that it's, it's not going to turn out for anything good. And I love that image, the Prince of Peace image by uh, Akain. I don't know how you say her name, but Akiana, I think it's Akiana. yeah, she, it's such a beautiful it's image. Cool. And I have that in my prayer space. Uh, and I just love looking at that image because it reminds me of this Jesus who's a real man with these compelling eyes who just is like, like that makes it so much easier for me to surrender mm-hmm. when it's not just I'm surrendering to an idea or an ideal. I'm surrendering to a person. And that person is the person of love. There is nothing bad that is coming from his heart towards me. It's only good. Mm, That's so good. Yeah, and along those lines, continuing to stay in the gaze of Jesus, but also it's a both and. This is a personal journey between you and the Lord. Mm -hmm. And there's power in community. There's power in inviting Amen. someone else to journey with you inside your heart. And I was even thinking about it. I'll see if I can find the clip and put in our show notes. Like my mother used to watch these episodes of I Love Lucy when I was little. <laughs> and there is the funniest episode of Lucy and Ethel crushing the grapes with their feet. That's iconic. <laughs> yes. So that is so iconic. That episode. Perfect. 
Yeah. And it just totally pops into my head as we're doing this episode. I'm thinking, okay, all right, who are those brands that you could grab that can crush those grapes with you? Like that can get the, the grape juice underneath your toes, but hold your hand and laugh also, mm. you know, like laugh, like this is hard, girl, it's going down. Like, mm-hmm. okay. And where you can find joy in the hardship, you know, we count yes. it all joy. It tells us in scripture, mm-hmm. but also remind you because you will forget who you are and you will forget sometimes who he is. And so you have to have those people that walk inside your heart and they have to be trusted people, but you also have to invite the people and extend the invitation to people. Like I need you in this part of my journey to hold my hand and let us crush these grapes, allow the Lord to crush us, but let's crush them together too. Mm. And be with me as we part and laugh a little too, like laugh because come on, it can't all be serious. You know, mm-hmm. sing a little Moana, whatever you need to do, you know. <laughs> so, yes. That's a good word. That's a good word. Amen, girl. That's a mm-hmm. good word to end there. Yes, and amen, and amen to it. So so the Lord is about beautiful things. He's about making new wine uh, that continues to mature and grow and to become richly fragrant and vibrant, uh, a song unto the Lord for sure. So, ladies, shall we talk about our one thing for this viney episode. Heather, do you want to bless everybody with your one thing? Well, my one thing this week is a new podcast from our dear friends, Father Dave Pavanka and Dr. Bob Rice called They That Hope. That's the podcast that they started about a month ago, I think. And um, I was tuning into it, listening, having a good chuckle about the things. They're just great, great guys. Like their whole goal is to maybe laugh a little and give some hope in the middle of, uh, you know, a lot of darkness in the world. But at the end of their episode, they did a little shout out to Abiding Together. And it was the most hilarious, like, promo that I listened to. I was like, (laughs) I texted Father Dave after. I'm like, wow, that's the, wow, that was the most unique um, pro shout out that we've ever had because Bob Rice was like, oh, let me use my radio voice. He's like, are you a woman? I was like, whoa, that's creepy. I was like, suddenly it turned from like this super sweet like promo to like, oh my gosh, you sound like Liam Neeson from Taken. You're like, I will find you and I will kill you. I was like, hmm, we may not use that. <laughs> oh gosh, those guys just make me laugh. But there has just been some gold moments on that podcast. It's just another place for you to receive. So check it out. They that hope podcast, Father Dave Fonka and Bob Rice. Mm-mm. Michelle, Mm-mm. what's one thing? My uh, one thing, kind of one things is a song by, I don't think I've said it before. I'm like trying to remember my memory, but I've been listening to it for the last couple of weeks is Corin Hawthorne. And if I have you, you just need to listen to the song again. Know You. And she's an amazing artist. And the song is just powerful. It's Know You. It's with her and Stephanie Gretzinger. And I love it. And then she has another song, How Great. And both of those, like they have become anthems to me in the morning on a playlist. And I love it. And How Great is, I think, co-written by our good friend, Matt Marr. And so both of those. And so, but she has a powerful, soulful voice. But the part of Know You with Stephanie Grinsinger, she has this just powerful part in the song, you know, if you're not in it, I don't want it. And it's just this part of surrender and just this plea and just such a powerful voice, like just the plea of the heart saying, I just want to know you better, Lord. And mm. that is just the cry of our heart. I just want to know you better. And if you're not in it, take it away. I don't want it. Mm-hmm. So um, I will post the link to both of those. What about you, sister? Mm-hmm. Well, my one thing is the book that I was referring to earlier in this podcast called The Life Model, Living from the Heart Jesus Gave You. And it's just a great uh, just a, a great explanation of the human person, the psychological aspects of the human person, and also the, the areas of redemption where Jesus Christ comes to integrate us. And it talks about community, personal responsibility versus, and, and with, not versus, but in tandem with community and the tasks that are achieved at every stage of life. So how we grow, it's just so well done. And then you'll see areas in your own heart where the Lord has matured you and you'll see areas in your own heart where he still wishes to do so. So I would, I just would highly recommend it. It's just a beautiful way of integration of the human person and in the heart of Jesus Christ. So I would highly recommend that book, which I will include in the show notes. Well, dear listeners, we are on the journey and we are all about abiding in the Lord and for he delights to have us in his heart and he wishes us to be nowhere else. So until next week, we will be abiding together. God bless you. 
Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. If you liked it, would you please share it with a friend? We encourage you to head over to our website, abidingtogetherpodcast.com, where you can find all the show notes, links to our one thing, transcripts, group discussion questions for each episode, and beautiful mugs, t-shirts, journals, and prints in our shop. There you can also subscribe to receive our weekly email with links to each new episode and all of its content. We'd love to connect on social media and invite you to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter so you can catch inspiring reflections every day. You're also welcome to join our private Facebook group and dive deeper into discussions with our fellow listeners. If the podcast has blessed you, would you prayerfully consider financially supporting us? The Abiding Together podcast is only available due to the generous support of our listeners. There are significant costs associated with creating this content, such as tech support, design, website, equipment, and hired staff that we need to be able to continue offering great content to you. Abiding Together is a nonprofit 501c3, and all donations are tax deductible. You can make donations of any amount through a website called Patreon, or you can send us a check directly if that's easier. If you donate $15 or more per month on our Patreon page, you become a tribe member and you will receive monthly individual videos from Michelle, Heather, and I, as well as other exclusive content, recipes, playlists, downloadable prints, and more. You can find all the information about Patreon at patreon.com forward slash abiding together. Thank you and God bless you.